The WNBA draft was recently, and it got me thinking about a comment that Angel Reese made. Angel Reese, the LSU star, the national champion, the most outstanding player of the NCAA tournament on the women's side, said that she's in no rush to get to the WNBA because she's getting more money in college than some of the top stars in the WNBA are getting. And it got me thinking after the WNBA draft about how right she is. Let's talk about it after the bumper. Stay tuned. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? My name is Jeff Lightsey Jr. This is the Vic Information Sports Show right here on Jeff Lightsey Jr. YouTube, Facebook, and wherever you get your content. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like, share, and subscribe. Now, as I kind of laid out for you, Angel Reese has been just blowing up everywhere. Angel Reese is a superstar of star capability, and she's getting paid like a superstar. Shout out to the young lady from LSU. Let me go ahead and show you something that On3 put out recently about how Angel Reese is getting to the bag. Do you hear me? The Bayou Barbie is not messing around. She just got an NIL evaluation, a reevaluation. It says LSU's Angel Reese now has an On3 NIL evaluation of $1.3 million. $1.3 million. She has gained over 2 million followers across the social media platforms since the beginning of March. Reese is now the highest projected earner in all of women's college basketball. Shout out to Angel Reese getting the bag. Do you hear me? Getting that money. Now, why is any of this? Why does any of this matter? Well, because Angel Reese recently came out and said, yo, I'm not in a rush to get to the W, meaning the WNBA. I'm getting more money than a lot of the players in the WNBA. And here is how we can put what Angel Reese had to say into context. This is to give you some context on what she's talking about because the WNBA draft was recently. Let me go ahead and find you. Where are we at? Where are we at? So Aaliyah Boston of South Carolina was the number one overall pick by the Indiana Fever in the recent WNBA draft. Let me go ahead and show you her salary, because her salary in the first four picks, I think, all get the same salary. But this is what the number one overall pick, Aaliyah Boston, salary will be. It says expected number one overall WNBA pick. When this is before the draft, Aaliyah Boston should sign a three-year, two hundred thirty-three thousand four hundred sixty-eight dollar non-guaranteed contract with the Indiana Fever, including a club option for twenty twenty-six. Her seventy-four thousand. $305 salary for 2023 won't hit the cap until blah, blah, blah. So basically, you're locked into this salary as the number one overall pick, $74,305. Now, y'all remember that other number I just showed y'all? Angel Reese, NIL evaluation. And that's just really them guessing. They really don't know, but they're guessing it's up over a million dollars. Whereas your WNBA salary is under $80,000. Do you see where I'm going with this? Do you see? And see, here's the, here's the beauty behind college. Because the women's game, women's basketball and college game is growing, then the college stars are getting paid like stars. But when you go to the WNBA, your value isn't the same. Here's why I say that. Because more people are watching women's college basketball than they are watching women's professional basketball. Want to know how I know that? It's because the most watched basketball game on ESPN, and the WNBA, all their games are on ESPN, but the most watched basketball game on ESPN this year didn't come from an NBA game. It didn't come from a men's college basketball game. It came from the women's college basketball game. Because the women's college basketball, one, is growing, and they got a bunch of stars. A few of them didn't even play this year, and it was the most profitable, biggest, best year they've ever had. Meaning Paige Buckers is what I'm talking about. But the thing that the women's college game has over the women's professional game is that they have built-in fan bases. LSU has a fan base no matter what. There's... A million, there's a million, a bunch of people that don't, that are alum 
of LSU. There's a whole bunch of people each and every Saturday to go watch LSU football. There's people that support LSU men's basketball. And because there's so many alumni of LSU in other schools, all the schools, that you already have a built-in fan base. Now, you would say, hey, Jeff, the WNBA has been around for 25 years. Shouldn't they have a built-in fan base too? Ah, here's the thing. They should, but they don't. Now, why they don't, that's a whole different debate. I don't know. But for a league that's been around for 25 years, they've never turned a profit. The WNBA is funded by the NBA. And I think part of the reason, I don't know this, you can leave your thoughts in the comments. Part of the reason why they don't have a very large built-in fan base, they can never have a fan base like college because the alumni system. And now when you add the alumni with an exciting product and stars that are forced to stay, something that you that you aren't getting in the men's game, stars that are forced to stay, I mean, they get the transfer portal, but they're going to be in college for four years. It's just not the same. Whereas the WNBA, all of their teams or most of their teams are in cities with pro men's teams. So if you're deciding, even though it's the summer and they play the league during the summer, you're going to support the Chicago Bulls over the Chicago Sky. Are you going to support the Los Angeles Lakers over the LA Sparks? Are you going to, you get what I'm saying? So most of them play in cities with pro men's teams. And you say, oh, Jeff, there's, 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 uh, you know, colleges have men's and women's teams. Ah, that's true. But see, the reason why it benefits the women's, it goes back to what I said. Their stars are forced to stay. Your roster on the men's side, when it comes to co men's college basketball, that's why men's college basketball took a dip as far as ratings and stuff. Because they can change schools every year. You have a brand new roster every single year. Every single year. And it could be your best player could end up leaving. Where's Caitlin Clark? She's been at Iowa three years. She's going into year four. Paige Buckers, been at UConn three years. She's going into year four. Now, sometimes you'll get a star here or there that'll transfer. Angel Reese transferred from Maryland to LSU. Haley Van Litt is leaving Louisville to go somewhere. But even in that case, they're still in college. So I am just wondering, with this next wave of great hoopers in the women's game, Will their, will their star power be able to uplift the WNBA? I just don't know. I don't know if it will. Because the WNBA has had some stars before. Lisa Leslie, Cheryl Swoops, uh, Bri you know, Brittany Griner, Brianna Stewart, Maya Moore. And none of that has generated the level of excitement and Angel Reese, a Clay a Caitlin Clark, have been able to create in college. And now with NIL and, and with some of these players still having those COVID years, they might elect to stay in college, continue to rack up them checks, then go and take a pay cut in the WNBA. Because part of the NIL money is visibility, right? It's the fact that you can play on TV, you can play in a national championship game, LSU and Iowa, and get 10 million people to watch on average, 12 and a half million people at the peak, 12 and a half million people tuned in. You're not getting 10 million people to watch a WNBA game. And then you add the fact that your social media, Angel Reese has over a million followers. She's gained, what, 2 million since March. Is that, are you going to continue to grow? Is your social media following going to continue to grow in the W like it was when you were in college? That's what the NIL and the endorsement money comes from. It's from how big you are and projections and who gets to put their eyeballs in you, both, both linear, meaning on TV, and social, digital. So, so Angel Reese could possibly be taking a pay cut by going to the WNBA. Aaliyah Boston had like 10 NIL deals. Is the money the same now that she's in the WNBA? In, a, in, in Indiana, playing for the Indiana Fever, instead of going undefeated, playing for Don Staley in South Carolina. You get what I'm saying? Super interesting how the women's game will continue to evolve. The women's game will continue to develop. The women's game will continue to grow in college. But will that ever translate to the pros? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Man, this is 
This is an interesting topic for me to talk about. My name is Jeff Lighty Jr. This is the Victor Formation Sports Show right here on Jeff Lighty Jr. YouTube, Facebook, and wherever you get your content. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like, share, and subscribe. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram at JLighty7 on Twitter and Instagram at JLighty7. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Peace.